Alright, so this is the man that created it, and now he's going to talk about the cool new fucking features about it. Damn. Is this microphone on already? Yeah, it should be. Okay, cool. Talk to that guy over there. Okay. Cool. It, everything's good? Awesome. <laughs> All right, hi. <laughs> hi. All right, so to kick things off, um, you know, this is the last talk. You might be kind of bored. I have a little competition I put together just to mess around. So there's a small backstory behind this. Um, hopefully you can see the link. Yeah. So last time I did this talk was at Sands Pentest Summit in November. It was an, it was an hour long slot and I did not finish. Now I got 15 minutes, so we'll see how that goes. But during the talk I had a live demo and I had an actual DNS server set up that I was using for the demo. And people kept on sending requests to it and like screwing my demos because they kept on like sending stupid things to it, which is awesome, but annoying. So this time I set up a special server just for you guys to screw around with. So if you want to send stuff, You'll see it on the bottom there when I have my um, slides off. So you can send me whatever messages you want. So, yeah. If you ever see The Simpsons, the cactus is McGaggy's birthday. That's what this is for. All right, so I am Ron. I run a blog called Skull Security. Um, I post there fairly regularly for the past few years. Uh, yeah, that is. So this meme used to be really, really popular, you know, like three years ago. Awesome. I'm bringing this meme back. Thank you. This judge right here has two so... Oh, perfect. Great. I used it because it's like funny on the internet. And it was funny on the internet at some point in the past. So, um, yeah, Skull Space, my hackerspace, we put together in Winnipeg a long time ago. I use Twitter. Um, I work at Google, but don't tell them I'm doing this talk because I didn't tell them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, very quickly, I just said I didn't tell my company I'm doing this, but even so, I don't represent my company, I'm here on my own, I pay for my own trip, blah, blah, blah. You know, don't take what I say to mean what Google means. All right, let's start with how does DNS work? DNS is really cool. Like I said, I did this talk in an hour, now I gotta do it in like 15 minutes. So this will be a very, very, very quick introduction to DNS. 12.5 minutes. 12.5 minutes. All right. So how does DNS work? You're sitting at a computer, you say dig at some DNS server, some domain. First thing that happens, it goes to your local router and says, hey, is it cached? Yep, cool, we're done. If not, send it on. If it sends it on recursively, it goes to some other DNS server, goes to some other DNS server, eventually it gets to the root servers. And the root servers will say like, well, we don't know, some whatever site that's called cyclabs.org. That's not us. So it's gonna keep on sending it on to a, an authoritative server. The authoritative server is mine because I registered the domain. Once it's there, I can return whatever I want. Now the really cool thing here is that I just got information from this computer on the left to the server on the right without actually talking to it. And that's really cool. The user never sent me a packet. The endpoint didn't send a single packet that left their own network. They sent that packet to the router and the router left the network. And that's what routers do. So really, like, who cares? Um, all right, so if you watch my talk from DerbyCon, I have a whole bunch of slides here about cool stuff you can do with DNS. We're gonna go straight to tunneling, the coolest part. This, this picture, by the way, is from, from Montreal. There's this tunnel in Montreal that's uh, really, really cool. That's, uh, yeah. Woo, Montreal. All right, so yeah, DNS is awesome because it bypasses most firewalls and bypasses most security. Very, sorry? Bingo. You won the prize. Do you wanna come get it? It's, it's awesome. Hang on. It's not a snow globe. Ah. It is. It's a garden gnome. There you go. Here's a box if you want it for transportation. All right, that was way quicker than I expected. That's what she said. <laughs> I don't have a beer. My time is limited, guys. All right. All right, so, um, <laughs> thank you. Distractions, man. So yeah, DNS is really cool because it bypasses most firewalls, most security. Very few companies monitor their DNS traffic, and most companies just allow it off the network if it goes through the proper router. So that's what we take advantage of. 
The problem is it's really hard to use DNS for tunneling. It's like really difficult. I'll talk about a few things really quick. DNS is completely stateless. I get a packet on my server and then say, where's this packet come from? I have no idea. So all requests come from the same port in the same upstream servers typically, or random servers, who knows? I have two beers. <laughs> is this like Hacker Jeopardy? Do I get points for every beer I drink? Yes. Nice. All right. We still have to finish within 15 minutes. Oh, crap. <laughs> One, oh, double fist this, all right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's all good, man. What time is it? <laughs> 10 minutes, man. So, so um, still have 10 minutes? Yeah. I'm doing good. <laughs> I have time to drink. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, DNS is stateless. So the solution is I came up with is basically, whenever a client connects, it picks a session ID and says, I am session one, I am session 100, I am session 1,000. That's the best I could do. And when the server receives it, it says, oh, you're, you're connection 100. Let's look at your state. That's basically how I do like layer, layer four. Like, essentially, that identifies what connection comes from who. So I use the session ID field. The other problem, really, is DNS is a one, one-way street. The client asks the server a question. The server can't ask the client a question. And that's kind of tough, because if the server wants to say, like, hey, download a file from me, the, client's gonna, the client like, doesn't know what wants to that, unless the client says, hey, do anything? So I did with some polling. There's like hex on these slides. If you decode the hex, it's funny stuff. I wrote the funny stuff like two years ago, so I have no idea what the funny stuff is. <laughs> but it's probably really good. So the thing is, even if the client has nothing to say to the server, there's no data to go, the client still says, keep, keep saying like, hey, do you have something? Hey, do you have something? So what happens is, it'll say like, do you have a TXT record? I use TXT, I use CDAME, I use a, f a few record types. Um, so it says, what, do you have a TXT record for this? The response is that. I believe that says knock knock in, in hex, but I'm not positive. So it gets a response. It sends a TXT, gets a response, sends a TXT, and so on. Even when there's nothing to send, the client just sends blank messages and says, hey, I have nothing to say, but do you have anything? So a lot of times in the connections, you just wind up with like blank message, blank message, blank message, blank message. And it's all fine. The problem is, that sounds really simple, but that's not really how DNS works. <coughs> so in reality, DNS is more like the client sends a message, then another one, then another one. It turns out clients gratuitously send messages over and over again. Frequently, I'll get like three or four messages simultaneously, and that has to be detected. And that's really hard. I added encryption support recently, and to actually encrypt stuff, to do a key exchange when you get the key multiple times, it's like, you get the key, okay, everything's encrypted. Now I get the key again. Oh crap, what do I do? So it's, it's actually a really difficult challenge. So the server responds, and the client says, ah, I didn't hear that, I'm going to ask again. It's like UDP, but like so much worse. Eventually it's like, <laughs> that's it, I, I give up. So I'll try to finish it, come on. So um, the next thing is retransmissions and drops are very, very common. Many DNS clients and relays will just retransmit like to every DNS server they know. If you have four things in your in your resolve.conf file, it'll just send to all of them. So you gotta be able to handle that. My solution is a very custom TCP style protocol designed with one way communication in mind. So basically it's a polling protocol. I ask a question, I get a response. Ask a question, get a response. I have SIN, SIN packets, message packets, and FIN packets, and encryption packets. It's all it's all very complicated, and it's all in my protocol.md file, so check it on GitHub if you're actually curious. The cool thing, and this is, this is fairly new, I, I actually committed this in November, so about three months, two months. All sessions are encrypted, completely encrypted. So when you do a connection to a server, it negotiates a key, and it's an it's a ECDH key. So it uses ECDH and, and negotiates a shared session key for that session. I, there are attacks, I think there are theoretical attacks against this. It's not like ATLs or anything, but it's pretty good. For most people, man the middling DNS connections, they're probably not gonna be able to do anything with this. So, encryption is really cool. Put a lot of work into it. The cool newest thing, tunnels. I committed the tunnels, the tunnels code on Christmas Eve. So I was working on this on Christmas. Basically, so let's say you compromise a server, you install DNS on the server. Um, you, install a, you install a client on the server, which I realize is really weird. The client's talking to you through its router. 
and you have a command session. I'll show you what it looks like shortly. I'll do a demo. Um, so it has a command session open, and you can, you can download files, you can upload files, you can do stuff. But the new thing added was tunneling. So what you can do is say, listen on port 1234, and forward connections through this, through this tunnel to a port on the client's network, which is this a server, yeah. So you can forward basically onto a corporate network. So it listens on port, the connections go over the network and connects. I'll demonstrate that. Uh, yeah, so let's do a quick demo. Quick. How much time? <laughs> Dudes. <laughs> All right. Five minutes, man. Five minutes, plenty of time. All right. So uh, this time I'm running a client and server on the same machine and using a local connection because, like I said last time, my demo got kind of wonky. So I'm going to run a DSCAT server, which basically listens, on this case, on port 53531, and will send and will like, deal with clients that way. <coughs> so what you see when you immediately start the server, we're not looking at the porn tab. That's you know, I, I got one dirty tab and one porn tab. The dirty tab says Trump propaganda, by the way. <laughs> so it gives you a command and says, hey, you can run a DSCAT server like this. What's kind of cool is that at the end you have dash dash secret equals, equals some hex. That's a pre-shared key that you can use to identify connections explicitly and make sure they're encrypted and not being man in the middle. So I'm going to copy that and go to the client, paste it. <laughs> All right. The client connects and fails in the pre-shared key. Oh, <laughs> I fail. Thank you. I was going to connect without the authenticator, which is, you know, when encryption doesn't work, just turn off the encryption, right? <laughs> right? All right, so session established. And you'll see it says pure validate with pre shared secret on both sides. <laughs> oh my god, hi, mom. This is fun. Doing this on purpose is great. <laughs> so you'll see session two started, encrypted, and verified. The reason session two is because session one was the one with a bad key. So. We're going to do, the commands are very similar to Metasploit and Interpreter. So interact with session two, you get a list of commands. So you can run download, you can run upload, you can run ping. Ping basically just like says, hey, is things still alive? Ping pong. Um, yeah, you can, you can do a few things. You can use shell to spawn a shell and so on. <coughs> What's interesting though is listen. So I can say listen on port one, two, three, four. Actually, I'm going to do something different because that was, so listen part one two three four forward all connections to somewhere else. <laughs> so I'll just forward to one of my one of my servers. So this means the server is going to listen on port one two three four one two three five. Every connection that comes to the server is going to leave through the client. So now if I start a new shell, make it bigger, bigger. If I SSH to localhost on port. <laughs> I'm not even watching these anymore. <laughs> this is great. So my SSH to localhost, what should happen is on the server you'll see connection received from localhost forwarding, <laughs> I've got this canceled, uh, forwarding to javaalp.com port 22. On the other window you'll see I have an actual, I have an actual SSH session. If you uh, want to know what's going on, you can view, oops. You can view kind of debug window, which tells you like what, what the send receives are. So in this case, nobody look while I'm typing my passphrase. So what you're going to see is lots and lots of big DNS packets going back and forth. You'll you also see it's mixing packets between MX, CNAME, and TXT. So you get different kinds of records. But yeah, so this is a DNS shell or DNS tunnel going over, uh, going over DNS. First time it's ever been shown in public. Woo. So it's not super fast, but it's also not super slow, which is actually kind of impressive. Like, if you have lots of data, it actually goes pretty speedy. So yeah, that's that's that. Um, a, a few quick future plans. A couple minutes. One more minute. Cool. So a few future things. More tunneling. I'm gonna add SOX, SOX four and SOX five support, so you can tunnel like properly through it, not just forwarding single ports. I'm gonna make things faster. 
base 32 compression. I figure I can get about 30% faster based on nothing in particular. <laughs> um, shellcode. For DNSCAT 1, way a million years ago, I wrote shellcode that would be about 300 bytes and starts a DNS shell. And a better UI, uh, web UI, and curses, something that's not quite so janky as, as the current UI. And that is all. <laughs> Almost. I'm trying. I will finish it. Okay. I'm good anyway. Okay, well, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> it's Coors Light. <laughs> Why? Like, sorry. <laughs> All right, so any questions? Do I have time? Thanks. It's not a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simon Cowell. <laughs> so, which is Simon Cowell, by the way? This is an important question. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> Paul. Thank you.